Chapter 1 Christina didn't like the sensation of free-falling from the sky. No visible threads were holding her above her parents' suburban home in normal Illinois. The feeling reminded her of a roller coaster gone haywire, except she had feathers lodged between her front teeth, making her think maybe she had eaten the contents of her pillow and entered a disturbing nightmare. Unfortunately, it wasn't a dream at all, but some kind of spiritual journey. Guilt made her think she deserved all of it and more. This wild shot through the sky had turned her into a free-falling piece of space junk or the embodiment of a twisted piece of penance. As punishment for her transgressions and mild but slightly evil teenage thoughts. Whatever it was, her current situation had her corporal body whirling through the atmosphere at a horrific and unpleasant speed. Needless to say, no one heard her screams. As she fell, she tried making sense of the immense ordeal that had taken control of her life in the most unusual ways. Her everyday reality had become some kind of paranormal or existential situation that had evolved into recent encounters with strange people, new places, religious icons, angels, possibly demons, intent on literally turning her world upside down. There were no fantasy castles, wizards, goblins, or magical spells to make her think she read it in a book. There were no unicorns, rainbows, or tiny trolls from fairy tales that might have lodged into the crevices of her imagination. Nonetheless, screaming felt so much better than trying to figure things out. Help! I'm sorry for everything. As she gasped out the words, she began to remember how everything stemmed from that one day, the day she wore her ripped jeans and had a fight with her mom about how to dress for school. Thank goodness for friends, she had thought, punching in Molly's number. Oh my God, my parents are so weird. I just can't take it anymore. She had said to Molly, who lived like a spoiled princess in Bloomington, with her poodles and her ballet classes. Yeah, I know how you feel, she replied, trying to sound like she could relate. Where's your mom from, anyway? She has a cute accent. Cute? Blech. There's nothing even vaguely cute about either one of them. I wish I had different parents, normal ones like yours. That was it. The moment she uttered those words, her life had changed. All of her friends had told her that they had wanted different parents. It was a typical conversation starter and something to text message or blog about. Meanwhile, her throat felt hoarse, screaming and praying to different saints while feathers lodged in her throat. Was this supposed to teach her a lesson? Had she learned anything? I'll be good. I promise. The winds tore the words from her mouth as she clung to her purse above Redbird Arena and Epiphany Catholic Church. Oh my God, can anyone hear me? Panic filled her as she looked out over the foggy horizon dotted with tiny clouds. Please help if anyone up there can hear me. She yelled to no one in particular as the Amtrak to Chicago drowned out her voice. The irony of living in a town called Normal seemed to be obvious to everyone but Christina's ethnic parents. Everyone, even her whack job of a drama coach, knew that nothing was normal and normal. The town was like a giant crossword puzzle with tricky question marks tossed in to keep everyone guessing the truth. How normal is normal? No one knew all the hidden abnormalities, but the obvious things stood out like an infected and blistering boil. Most normal towns with shops and taller buildings, for example, called the central area downtown, rather than uptown as in normal. Weirder still was that America's only Mitsubishi manufacturing plant was turning out SUVs with the help of Molly's rich mom. As if Molly's mom couldn't just stay at home playing with those spoiled curly-haired dogs, she had to go to work and fly 